On Second Thought, episode 330, brought to you by Hook'em.com, our good friends at Bud Light. I'm Cedric Golden, joined as usual by the Duck, Kirk Bowles. And Kirk, uh, man, this is last notice, but we got royalty on this thing. The NCAA tournament is <laughs> upon us, and we got a man that knows a little bit about UT. And depending on what you, who you ask, which UT, it doesn't matter. It's Rick Barnes. Long on coaching legend and the current coach of the Tennessee Volunteers, who play St. Peter's in their opener in Charlotte. Coach, how are you? I'm doing good. Good to be with you guys. I miss you. You too. Miss you too. Uh, boy, tournament yeah. never gets old, does it? Gets the juices going. No, you know, uh, Kurt, I tell my guys the first thing I tell them once we have been fortunate to get there and blessed, I tell them, I say, you don't ever take it for granted because, uh, it's hard, and it's gotten even harder now. And uh, you think about this, we just came out of a league where we won it. We're going into the last week. There was a possibility of having a five-way tie for first couple of days. And, uh, but we ended up winning it, and then, I think, and then four teams tied for second, you know, one game behind us. And uh, so it, we've, we've had a great year. Our non-league schedule was good, but it's hard to believe March Madness is here. It's here, all right. And you drew St. Peter's uh... – St. Peter's was a giant killer just a couple of years ago, beating Kentucky, beating Purdue, getting the Elite Eight. Uh, tell us what all you know about the Peacocks. Well, we know what you know about a team from in the Northeast are very tough. They're aggressive. They're going to build, uh, I think their uh, motto is uh, tough. Tough is not enough. And uh, if you watch them play, that's what they do. They, uh, they've got some uh, certainly some good players they wouldn't be playing this time of year. They play a, a slower style. They will uh, take as much time as they need to get the ball up the court, and then they're going to try to spread you out a little bit, try to drive you. Uh, very much an inside-oriented team. Have had games like everybody where they've made some threes, but uh, they really want to get into the lane, really high-percentage shots, and uh, get on the offensive glass. You know, um, you mentioned Northeast, and, um, I mean – that's, that's horrible that you say that because there's no way you have any experience dealing with teams from the Northeast. I mean, in your, in your storied career, I read, yeah. I read, <laughs> big, the read that the Dana O'Neill's great book on the big East and you're all over that book. Um, that's old school yeah. basketball. And um, is that kind of get your blood pumping a little bit, knowing that you're in for a physical tussle like the old days? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I I like it. I don't mind it. And you know what? I, I I will tell you this. You know, we know the Big East did get many teams in this year, but I tell you this: I thought they had the most physical league in college basketball this year. When I watch games, that was there. But that's that's a Northeast style of basketball. When you when you really think about it, every league up there they have good players. And what you have to admire about the teams like we're playing St. Pete. I mean, those those guys on that team, they they want to be at the highest level too. And they, if they're at St. Pete, they're there to prove something. And uh, there's, you know, one of the players on the team, I understand, went up for, uh, paid his own way to go up for a uh, tryout and told the coach, I'm not leaving until you give me a scholarship. And when you got a, a mentality like that, that's, <laughs> that's, 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 that's more impressive than anything you can really throw out there when you got guys with that kind of mindset and, you get that from teams in the Northeast, but I can tell you this St. Pete team, there's guys on this team that was on the team you mentioned, Kurt. So they've been there. They've been able to witness. And so there's no doubt they're coming into this game knowing that they have just as good a chance as anybody. And your point guard, Zach Ziegler, he's pretty familiar with this team, isn't he? Yeah, you know, you got to you got a half brother on the team that uh, – a little bit bigger, you know, I, I asked uh, Zakai, I said, uh, who wins those games? He said, Coach, come on now, you know he's not going to beat me. But his brother's different. His brother's 6'3 and built differently, but a uh, good basketball player, really does a good job driving the ball. You couldn't get him to come to? Zakai's not that good a recruiter? Well, no. Uh, well, the, uh, we couldn't at the time. But, um, you know, I just hope it doesn't bite us. <laughs> Man, I hear that. Um, I, I... Elephant in a room, Rick. I, I know one game at a time, sweet Jesus. I know how we how we do it. But if if Texas wins and Tennessee wins, then then there's a Texas Tennessee second round bonanza. Rick Barnes v his former assistant Rodney Terry, his other assistants Chris Ogden, Frank Haith. Everybody <laughs> and everybody. We were joking with Brock Cunningham that he played for you too, but uh, he wouldn't come clean on yeah. that. He's been around yeah. for, for um, 
How many times have you been asked about that this week? <clears throat> really, you know, uh, you know how CBS comes in and they have somebody following every team. Just one time, really. But the thing I'm going to find out is I'm going to see where you two loyals, loyalties lie. You know, and uh, <laughs> we love you. But you know, it, you know, uh, the fact of the matter is, we are close. You know, I talk to those guys throughout the year, and 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 they are my guys. I mean, there's no doubt about it. And but you know what? When that bracket, when it came up, we were in Charlotte. I fully, in my own mind, said somewhere close here is going to either be Clemson or Texas. Just the way, <laughs> just like they just sent our girls to play our women's team to play down at uh, NC State where Kelly Harper used to coach. You know I mean? They do that at I don't know by just my time in it. You just kind of expect it, you know? They love doing that. They love doing yeah. that. What kind of emotions will that uh, trigger in you if, if it happens in the second game? You know what? Honestly, Kurt, I, I don't – right now I can't even think about it because of you know what I know about this tournament. I mean, the hardest thing in this tournament is getting started. And uh, we've got it. We've got to do that. I mean, we can't. I haven't even thought about anything other than I. I do know that I think Colorado State and Virginia play. If I'm right, I think they play the right. last game tonight. I think. And uh, sure. but I can't let myself myself go there in terms of I just I just got to think about today. Everything we did in practice today was solely locked in on on St. Pete and we Peters, and we've got to you know we've got to keep that mindset. But do you at least have one good story on Rodney uh, Terry? You got to have one good story or anecdote. Uh, yeah, the for, uh, first time we went recruiting, we had we'd gone to grab something to eat, and you know me, I you know I eat quick, and I was done with my meal, and he was about the, not even a third of the way through. I said, "Man, what are you doing?" He said, "Well, my mother taught me to chew 120 bites." I said, "Well, you better get something to go," because I said, "I'm getting ready to leave." <laughs> but. Uh, I always loved being with Rodney, you know, and, and, uh, you know, Rodney came, you know, he was young and, you know, and, you know, he had a year before, I think he had a chance to go to Oklahoma, but he always wanted to come to Texas. And Frank Haith asked me about it. I said, you know what? I have a great relationship with Calvin Sampson. And I said, if Rodney goes there, I would never try to uh, think of trying to hire somebody off Calvin's staff because of my respect for, for Calvin and, and, uh, and Rodney decided, I think not to do it. And obviously we hired him, I, th I think a year later. If well, you I remember some, right. You had some glorious seasons yeah. at Texas. I don't know if there's one memory yeah. stands out or not. Yeah, and 2003 Final Four. We well, see T.J. Ford around. He's he's hanging around, and he's always mentioning yeah. you. And um, I know I know this is feeling yeah. like a memory lane thing, and you're going to be going to war tomorrow. Um, but um, – when you think about the years that you spent here and 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 winning 402 games and and that magical 03 season getting Kevin Durant here um uh, I know you've got coaching to do but do you ever stop and think about how how much freaking fun that was uh live, living here and 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 bringing some special times to Austin <laughs> Yeah, I, I I do. I mean, that'll always always be a part of me and I love my time there and was blessed to have a chance to coach so many terrific players. And, and Kurt mentioned a, a memory. I mean, this time of year, I mean, I'll never forget the night uh, we we went to the Final Four and we won the regional down in San Antonio. And TJ hugged me after the game. And I remember him screaming in my face, we're going to the Final Four, we're going to the Final Four. And Tom Izzo, who's a dear friend of mine for 45 years, just stood right there, didn't leave. And, uh, you know, how it is, you, you can't, when you lose a game, you're ready to get out of there. And But Tom stood there with a smile on his face and, waited to shake my hand and said, hey, enjoy it, pull them for you. And that's a memory, obviously, but there's a lot. You know, I mean, we could talk about KD and some of the things he did through the years, but so many other uh, other guys. But uh, I enjoyed my time there, and, and I really appreciate that. You know, when I went there, DeLos Dodds told me they were going to make a commitment to basketball, and I do think they worked at it. I do. I think, you know, the Irwin Center was a difficult place to fill up. There was times, you know, when KD played where we didn't have the house as full as we'd like to, but uh, – Still, I, I have nothing but great memories of, of the University of Texas and, and Austin. And you've been in the SEC for a good while now. Is there one major difference between the Big 12 and the SEC in your mind? Well, our league has changed so much in nine years, Kirk. I mean, you go back to where we were, and uh, when we started here, there was a lot of work to be done in basketball. You go back nine years ago, everything in this league was going pretty strong except men's basketball. Mm -hmm. and, and, I and And we've always had great coaches in this league. 
I think that the biggest difference now is the commitment has come from the very top where they really won't. I think athletic directors are seeing what basketball can do. And I've watched almost every facility in this uh, league change in terms of, you know, we, we, we have some big arenas. I mean, you know, you talk about us in Kentucky that, you know, we get 21, six, seven, eight every night during the conference season and Kentucky's got their place, but, you know, some of them have gone to smaller buildings at that, like in the big 12 and, but the excitement with the fans has really started to build in, uh, but uh, it, it's come from the commitment from the administrations. And tell us about Dalton Connect. Uh, how dynamic and how good a player is he? Well, you know, we obviously didn't know that was coming when we got him, you know, and, and the fact is he uh, he really came in and then you start hearing stories about him during the summer because Jemai Meshack and he getting at it pretty good. But, you know, once you get into preseason, we're going and, and until we went to scrimmage job, uh, uh, Michigan State, in, a, in an exhibition game that we ended up doing for the Maui Classic, and they sold the building out, and he did some things in that game that we hadn't seen. And then from there, he just kind of took off. And then we had a really demanding schedule early against, you know, playing Wisconsin, Kansas, Purdue, uh, Illinois. You just you just saw it building. And uh, But for him to get where he is today, I think he made every All-American team. And mm -hmm. I wish I wish I would have known it was coming. I probably would have had a better off season, you know. But uh, he's been, he's been special. He's very humble, very uh, simple, and and I say that in the in the kindest of ways where he strictly wants to play basketball, nothing else. But he's handled everything pretty well because because again he didn't expect this either. He just wanted to. He actually told us, "I want to go to a place where I can get to the NCAA tournament and help a team win, and uh, I want to get better." And he's done all that. Yeah, you guys um, won the regular season, but but are entering the tournament with a couple of losses, um, including quarterfinal loss to uh, Mississippi State. Um, what are your concerns about that? Because I know I know I've talked to, we've talked to you in the past, and you always want to enter enter the the big dance on a on a little bit of a momentum streak. Well, you know what we we were too emotional senior night playing at Kentucky. You know we'd won the we we clinched the regular season you know, the game prior to that in, in Columbia, South Carolina, came home and, and our guys played hard and, and uh but we were too emotional early in the game and we and, and it just it was what it was. And Kentucky's a, a terrific team, believe me. They they could beat anybody in this tournament. They're good. And then we went and played uh we went and played Mississippi State who was uh, very aggressive and you know what we we played I thought our two worst halves of the year this year. We played a bad half at North Carolina and we played a uh, the poorest half all year against Mississippi State. And that's not to take away anything from Mississippi State because they did what they had to do. But you know what? Uh, I can't tell how many texts I've gotten from people that said, hey, you know, the last time you guys went to the Final Four, you guys, you know, uh, got beaten in the first round of your conference tournament. And uh, But you look around, every every team in the Power Five that won the regular season got beat in their conference yeah. tournament except Connecticut, who won their conference by four games. Right. And yeah. uh, so – you know, that's conference tournaments, but now I'm just hoping, and I, I got so much respect for our league that we haven't beaten each other up too much because the last six weeks, last four weeks of our league was brutal for everybody that's in this tournament. That can wear you out. Well, last question I got for you, Rick, before we let you go. I, this seems to be one of your best balanced teams. I don't know where you would rank it in terms of most talented team, but your team is balanced. It is, and we, and we it is balanced, Kurt. We got and we got to get back to where we're using the balance. I mean, uh, we we need we need more from our post players in this tournament, but we need consistency. And we haven't shot the ball well the last couple of weeks, and we need to get back to making some shots. But I say that, but we, we you know, there's halves that we'll put up 52, and then we'll go into a law, which we that's what we got to stay away from if we want to do what we want to do in this tournament. Well, Rick, uh, man, we cannot begin to thank you for. Man, mm -hmm. I mean, famous people don't do that, but you, but you, you, you did it for the fellas, and we appreciate you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kirk Bowles knows all the the nice the nice old people in the league, and mm -hmm. you're about the same age. I'm gonna yeah. end with this, and I know it's not great. Uh, when the day I remembered that, when I realized that Rick Barnes loved Kirk Bowles, we're in the office and. Kirk gets a text from Rick Barnes and says, Hey, you got to get your prostate checked. I just got yeah. my, <laughs> and you better go get yours checked because that's important. I go, yeah. he loves you. And Kirk goes, I yeah. think he does. I yeah. think he does.
does. And many private exams later, here we still are. Yeah. Well, I do love you guys, and I appreciate you guys being a big part of my life. And I thank the good Lord for bringing all of our lives together. And I hope we got a lot of years left to talk about it. Yes, well, sir. You're the best. Good Damn. luck, my friend. We will we will see you in the tournament. Thank you so okay. much. All right. Thank you. All right. Love okay, you guys. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Right. He's a legend, and Ducky didn't have to do this interview. He's got no. bigger fish to fry than a podcast. Um, and and he was and he thought enough of us to come on. Um salt of the earth, good, good man, good man. He's just he's just so genuine and authentic, you know. He just he loves people, you know, and you know, we get to be cynical about, you know, coaches and administrators and stuff like that, but you know, I mean, I've known Rick. Like 27, 28 years, you know. And you've written, and you've written critically about Rick. Yeah. You you've been there for some of his worst moments and his uh -huh. best. And so and well, you called it like you saw it. And he he understood that the game is the game. Journalism is journalism. Basketball is basketball. And he never held a grudge. We've covered some coaches that that mm -hmm. we see them now. They look at us like, oh, what do you want? You know what I'm talking about, and but Rick Barnes was never that way. And for him, like you said, for him to come on with like an hour notice, you know, he's already in Charlotte. You know, he's got a game in St. Peter's, you know, coming up that he's got to get ready for. And uh, our hat's off to him. And, you know, I know we're supposed to be unemotional and detached and everything like that. But, uh, you know, and, and but if, if you can write critical things, but you're, you're honest and, uh, you're direct and, and fair. Rick fair, is fair, fair, definitely. Yeah, Rick's Rick's as good as they come. Oh, and, and by the time you guys are listening to this, the game the game is is Thursday, so tonight. But uh, for you, for what you know, this is a um, Tuesday. We interview Rick on a Tuesday uh, when you know he's getting ready and watching game film and preparing for the biggest game of the year. Yet he saw. Um, time to give us 20 minutes and that's what we love about this podcast there are good people out there that respect us enough to come on and and uh share their thoughts with you and um uh, yeah this is one of the highlights of my basketball season it was cool yeah we're just super grateful and, uh, and we're not done duck let's get to our next guest let's do it <laughs>